Welcome to Ask Win, everyone. This afternoon, I have Daddy with me, and so I'm going to miss Daddy take it away and share her story. We are recording this on October 5th, 2020. For those of you who are listening to this in real time, yes, we are in a pandemic, but I'm going to Denny, take it away and start us off. So welcome, Denny. Thank you, Wynn. And um, it's actually November 5th, if you can, you uh, know, realize how quick time is going by. Did and I have to say October 5th? You guys, October 5th. I meant, I meant November 5th. Oh. Yeah, I know. That's time just goes my by. My brain is going. <laughs> Yeah, no worries, but time is flying. And yes, we still are experiencing all of the things that we're experiencing. But what I do is I am a reverend and hypnotist and I help people heal. My specialty is actually self-sabotage and procrastination, but I also help people with quitting smoking, weight loss and those kind of things. But my journey didn't start out as a hypnotist. I was actually very successful on the outside and I worked with people. I still work with people with disabilities. I work with uh, deaf and hard of hearing and I'm a sign language interpreter. And so working with deaf and hard of hearing people, I love that you have this podcast when for people with disabilities to have their voice voices heard. But on my journey, I look successful on the outside. But in 2001, I was diagnosed with a very fast, deadly form of cancer. And I was told if I turned down traditional treatment, that I would be dead in two years. And so I was 35 years old at the time. I looked very successful on the outside, but on the inside, I was literally dying. And I had to come to terms with this space. So I know you talk about some of the questions that we do like on an everyday basis, like some of the things that I do every single day. You know, the first thing getting diagnosed is worry, panic, fear. But when one of the questions you asked me is like, describe your average day, what do your rituals or routines look like? And this is a very important word right here that you use, darling, rituals, routines. And when we're in this pandemic, a lot of us, our rituals and routines have been thrown off, if you will. And so getting back to those rituals and routines, that's one of the first things that I describe my average day is I do those rituals and routines, especially for myself. And those little micro goals that I accomplish for myself that lead toward the macro goal, the larger goal. And so that's what I do. And I help people who might struggle with this process, may need more guidance or assistance with this process. So now I have a question for you. And I have a friend whose mother is completely deaf um mom the mom com um refuses to get hearing aids looks at me like i was half crazy when i um when i went and spent time with her um no i know the daughter extremely well i don't know how this woman became deaf, um, but refuses to also refuses to give up, but refuses to um, give in and refuses to get help. I mean, and bless daughter's heart, she's trying to help mom the best again she finally gave up because um it's difficult so Denny how do we and this is not part of my baseline questions for the podcast but how do we present ourselves to the deaf community when we're not deaf ourselves and yet the deaf community 
doesn't, I don't, how, I'll put it this way, doesn't want to accept the healing community and yet the healing, some of the healing community does have disabilities. So if I, if I understand your question right, you know, um, how do you present yourself to the deaf community? And usually any community, the thing that connects us together is language and using sign language as their language and their way of communicating and learning it yourself shows respect. And so this is usually the doorway into any community is learn their language. Now, I know a lot of deaf people, <laughs> thousands of them. <laughs> However, if we go to them thinking, well, why don't you get the hearing aid? And why don't you learn how to talk and, and these things and become more hearing, quote unquote, we're trying to change them rather than accept them for who they are. And so any person with a quote unquote disability they want to be accepted for who they are, not someone who needs to be fixed. And this is how the whole medical, medical community looks at deaf and hard of hearing people. They have a hearing loss. They've lost something. Therefore, they need to be fixed. But if we can approach the deaf community and come to a level of language, who am I? My name is this. I'm from this area. Yes, I'm hearing. I have two kids. I'm married. You know, just basic communication. This is when the door opens wide up. And because the first okay. step is acceptance. So it's basic, it's basic communications. And I don't know if you guys know this, but um, both my mom and dad were, well, my dad also, was partially deaf. Mom was partially deaf. She um, did something as a child that made her partially deaf. And dad, dad just, God to love him, but he was deaf at the end and didn't want to admit it. And oh, we had a heck of a time explaining to him because he couldn't hear and didn't want to admit it. So I think, I think Denny's right in saying it's just about common language, you guys. Absolutely. And so it's just about common language. But so Denny, I have a question for you. What is your favorite book? Oh, yes. My favorite book is The Autobiography of a Yogi. And this book, the copy I have was printed in 1958. And I know Steve Jobs, uh, this was his favorite book too. And um, the reason why it helps me remember the power I have within me. How cool is that? The power you have within you. And for those of you who don't know who Denny is talking about, Steve Jobs was the co founder of Apple. And um, I believe that Steve Jobs not only had cancer, but he was deaf as well. Uh, don't quote me on that, you guys. But I believe that he was becoming deaf. So, Denny, what is your morning routine and what is your average ritual? Ah, my morning routine um, after my diagnosis of cancer and saying no to radiation and chemotherapy and the doctor telling me that I had two years to live, the first thing I had to do was be okay with dying. So every morning when I wake up, I wake up with such gratitude for another day to live. And so my morning routine, it's so easy, especially with all the stuff that's going on now, it's so easy to wake up and start going down that path, right? Yeah. So this takes conscious effort to wake up, 
be grateful in a space. This is a state of gratitude for all of the things I have, and not only the things I have, but for another precious day of life. Who can I serve? Who can I brighten up today? You know, how can I make today better than yesterday? So those are the questions I begin to train my mind. Otherwise, I have a mind that tends to go right toward the negative. You know what I mean? I don't know if anybody can relate to this, but so many oh, of us, yeah. yeah, we go right to that negative. And so it takes conscious effort. First thing I do in the morning is I'm in a space of gratitude. Thank you for another day of life. Now, we tend to go down questions like, um, how can today get worse? Today is just going to be blah. I ask questions like, how can today be amazing? How can I see more dragonflies today? How can I see more flowers blooming today? Whatever that is, so that you invite this in. The questions we ask are invitations into our experience. So I began to change the questions I was asking. So yeah, you you wouldn't be, it's all about your mindset. And when you wake up in the morning, your mindset starts with, um, being grateful for putting your feet on the ground for another day. Amen. Yep. And so if your BFF had to write a book about you, what would the title be? You know, my BFF would know all of the stuff that I went through after my diagnosis, well, maybe even before my diagnosis of uh, cancer. And it was a hell period for me. So I think she would title the book, um, I went to hell and came back Wonder Woman because I allowed myself to go there and worry about being dead in two years, but coming back, stepping into my power and realizing the strength and the power I have. And geez, I am, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm on the quest as we record this on November 5th, I'm on the quest to get officially diagnosed with asthma, and it's going to be an interesting journey. Let's just say it's going to be an interesting journey because um, <laughs> I am 99% sure I have it, and there's a couple people that can't deal with me having a double diagnosis. I am 99% sure I haven't. I've been waiting for this diagnosis for 33 years now. 33 years. And finally, I said enough is enough. So it's, I'm, if it's 100%, I will tell you guys, but, um, I'm just going to take it as a sign of gratitude that I finally got diagnosed with the appropriate diagnosis and I'll deal with it to the best of my abilities. Good on you. Good on you. Because I, that's how I, <laughs> that's how I deal with cerebral palsy. So I mentioned will deal with asthma, um, just like I deal with cerebral palsy. Yeah, it's, I'm sure I can only imagine. I do, I can't say I know what you're going through, but um, my heart is with you for sure. And anybody who lives with any kind of disability and you're human first, who happens to have a disability? And that's what we forget sometimes is we see the disability first, right? And then we forget about the human. And I always look at the eyes of anyone I see, and my heart is always with them. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And if you had to move and only take five things with you, and yes, your family could come, what would they be? I would bring my husband for sure. He's been with me. Well, we've been married 35 years and we've been together much longer. So he is my, my soulmate. So definitely bring him. I would probably grab my book and autobiography of a yogi. Um, 
Let's see, there's three more things that I would need to bring. A fishing pole, I don't know why. A guitar or a ukulele, either one will work. And let's see, one more thing. Could the one more thing be a set? I would bring a set of crystals. Yeah, the okay, one cool. more thing could be a set of crystals because if crystals help, they help. Absolutely, those would be my things. Yeah, well, that's amazing. And as we wrap this interview up, do you have any questions for me? Do I have any questions for you? Well, I can tell you love what you do. I can tell you love to get the message out about for people with disabilities and for others. Is there anything that you don't like about what you do? No, no, <laughs> frankly, I actually, that's not true. I, I would like a little bit more time off of this podcast. I would like, uh, you know, the moment you, the moment I say this, I would like a little bit more time off, but I love what I do. So I don't consider it a job per se. And so I love what I do. I mean, I love being a journalist. I just wish I had a little bit more time, even though I do have help with this job. Day one, I, day one, when this job was part-time and I had a part-time job that I was actually being paid for in education. And I kept teasing my fan base. I'm like, okay, now I just need to kick the day job out of the way, kick the day job out of the way. Finally, it got, to the week before the pandemic and I like thousands of Americans lost their job mm -hmm. and it was a blessing in disguise because now I can focus more on this and more on me so that was a blessing in disguise but I love what I do I just wish that I had a I had a little bit more time to myself, but that's okay. That is okay. We'll get to that point. But I wish that this podcast could automate itself sometimes, <laughs> but we'll get to that point. You guys we will get to that point. And you guys know why I'm saying it, why I'm Say that it's because I'm also in the midst of a move too. And so and so when that move happens, I'm going to have to be concentrating on that and less on the podcast. And so I wish that the um podcast end would would automate itself just a little bit more than it as already but other than that i love it excellent wonderful good on you yeah how many of us can say that we're doing what we love yeah i mean they say um they say hang out with the five people that you want to be like i get to hang out with people like you and interview people on a daily basis i am learning so much and I am learning so much about other disabilities. I mean, I started this platform not knowing how big it was going to go into, but mm -hmm. now, now it's a little green monster that I can't control. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little green monster when I that I can't control. Now I'm being interviewed. I'm giving interviews. I mean, it's like, really? Really? Here we go. And Here we go. Yeah. So, Denny, where can people find you if they choose to do so? Oh, well, thank you. Um, you can find me pretty much everywhere on social media under Heartfelt Awakening. And Heartfelt Awakening is a media company. We publish blogs, uh, ebooks, 
uh, podcast, what have you. And I also own Sycamore Hypnosis, where I see clients locally here in Sycamore, Illinois, or online. So I have clients internationally. So definitely, if you want to see if my services are right for you, let's set up a free chat. It's heartfeltawakening.com slash call. Heartfeltawakening.com slash call. And then you guys go support the disabled. I just go support anyone with a disability. I know you can't hug people right now due to this pandemic, but at least go support people with a disability. And please, 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 please go support their caregivers. Go support their caregivers, and one of the things I will say um, with the holiday season coming up, I am going to do a full French episode on this, and it may change, um, I may change my attitudes talking to Denny about this, but um, I'm going to say in that episode when we do it when my BFF and I do it I'm going to it was originally supposed to be um what you how you can support caregivers how you can support podcasters and teachers well it now it may be how you can support caregivers and podcasters alike because the caregivers have more and more stuff that they're dealing with than the actual disabled person. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Prayer to our caregivers, uh, giving them respite and, um, and my heart goes out to them. I have, both my children are on the spectrum, but they're adults now. And it's, uh, it's quite heavy on the heart when you, you know, our, our, to our caregivers who are always there, always there, always there. So I agree with you 1000%. My heart goes out to those caregivers. Yeah. yeah. Could we please help the caregivers, let alone help the people with disabilities? Well, I hope you guys enjoyed another fabulous episode of Ask Win, and I certainly hope you guys like and subscribe and pass this episode down. I said like and subscribe and Apple iTunes and um, if you guys need me, you guys know where to find me. Askwin.webelieve.com and Denny, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. Thanks. See you guys. Bye, you guys. Take care.